thank you sonali and uh, welcome friends and welcome to the fourth edition uh, of a, a business x series this is a special series we have started and we talk about three different subjects we talk about investment we talk about how do you scale and uh, also we talk about how to value your business so we have already done uh, three primary series of uh, all the three subjects uh, we have talked about uh, what is what is the ways of investment we talked about how do you scale the assets whatever investments you've done how do you scale your investments and also we've talked about the building value in enterprises and building values in uh, businesses so before i start further because we we are every time we have a lot of fresh people joining apart from a lot of people returning back i would like to summarize my last first talk when we did the investment so i'll give you some 10 golden rules which we call uh for investment as it's a very starting point so let's start with the 10 golden rules which needs to be done one rule which i always say is that there is no investment called passive investment right so first never think that you are a passive investor uh, there can be only difference you can have that you are an operator or a non operator but there is nothing like a passive investment so every investment you do is an active investment needs your time needs your attention and you need to monitor your investment that's point number 1 second when you invest always marry your financial and personal goals if they don't marry together and not for now but next 5 years or 10 years from now how they going to be coming together how your personal goals and your financial goals are coming together third always create a balance between your current liabilities and savings you know how do you how do you stack up you know if your liability is too much then maybe time is not right for you to invest and you need to really balance your liabilities and savings and and so on so forth unless you are on a comfort position to invest don't do that especially in these times these are very very challenging times stretching yourself too thin or getting into more investment where you are a uh, cash flow trap and a lot of other things are happening that would not be a good suggestion but if you are on the other side sitting on a lot of savings uh, and your business is still or your incomes are still thriving then this is a best time to invest uh, there would be no better time to invest uh, like this Uh, so you need to really first balance yourself where you are in terms of your current liabilities and savings you know what is your fallback plan if you invest and you don't get say returns on the investment or you're not able to liquidate your investment back in a certain time frame what is your fallback plan i mean sometimes people invest with the expectation that 3 years from now or 5 years from now i would like to exit out of this investment right and if that exit is delayed like this year a lot of exits would get delayed because nobody would be able to exit in this year a lot of investments it can be uh, large institutional investors pension funds a lot of people who have invested and thought that 2020 was the time they would like to have an exit maybe they would have to delay that exit if they don't want to take a, a strong haircut on their value in build because you might be building value for last 3 to 4 years and and this was a exit year for you and certainly this has happened and the valuations would significantly change and a lot of people would not like to call for exit this year so exit if get get prolonged what is your fallback period is this money required for something which you want to do that a lot of people invest with some kind of forecast when they need money to that fifth <coughs> which is very important and and i always question the investor and say money everybody can bring in especially when you are a early stage investor what extra you bring on the table what is the extra thing you are bringing in the table that's something which is very important sixth uh, which is the rule which we follow at at a group level when we advise companies we call master what matters mwm which means that how do you really go into deeper analysis on the business model a deeper analysis on the financial performance deeper analysis on the on the overall a uh, market uh, per performance industry performance and so on so on. you need to go very very strongly deeper into and master what matters that's very important another seventh point which is uh, important is what we call the consumer insights plus the balance sheet it's not either of that right sometimes the balance sheet is very attractive and look continue to look very attractive but we stop looking at consumer insight consumer is changing faster than you know and suddenly and what would happen in then they would you would get into a situation like tesla now tesla is is a very clearly a consumer inside uh, scenario where people were shifting or they were looking to shift to a lot of even government uh, you know governments were encouraging electrical and a lot of these conventional technologies were not able to do that while the market share the balance sheets would continue to see a lot of promising value in that they still improving their sales they still improving their margin they still selling more cars but they are not understanding how the consumer is going to shift 
And if this shift is very predominant, then suddenly this whole thing would change and there would be a large market shift to happen. So if you're not able to really see through in a businesses that what is the consumer insight telling you and what is your balance sheet telling you, both are important. It's not that either of that you need to do. You cannot be fooled around by just consumer insight. Eventually the balance sheet has to play a role. It has to say some, some kind of a sense of profitability. We've seen in modern retail, a lot of companies in the rush of modern retail, in rush of a lot of things have not performed because fundamentally they were obviously talking about a lot of consumer insight, but balance sheet was not stacking up. The balance sheet was not stacking up. So I have not seen many uh, great examples of uh, a performance in, in modern retail because of fundamentally, uh, you know, the business model financially never really be very, very attractive. And a lot of, uh, of failures we saw, I mean, we saw companies like uh, uh, you know, uh, Lilliput, uh, Lili Ginny and Johnny, uh, many of these uh, companies which were there at one point in time, uh, good companies, but they were not able to really able to do that because they, they're somewhere, uh, they, they, they were look from an outside viewpoint, look very attractive and a lot of uh, good private equity investors. I remember uh, Lilliput was able to uh, attract uh, Bain Capital, which was one of the top most uh, funds to do it. But, uh, you know, the business model was very, very weak. And uh, even if you attract the best of the investors, if your business model is very weak, your balance sheet is very weak, you will not be able to survive. <clears throat> Eighth point is be optimistic and a critic at both ends, you know, so, and you need to switch roles. Sometimes as a, on, as an investor, you always look at being very, very optimistic on asset and you need to switch a role and look at it as like a critic. And, and obviously optimism has to play because then that's, that gives you a reason to invest. But you need to also see through as a, as a critic. Change roles. Change roles whenever you're looking at investment. Look at from a both eyes and you need to flip the coin and see where you're coming from. And ninth is create your own personal board. You need to have few people. You really take any investment which you're trying to make. You are taking to your personal board and asking them what needs to be done. So that's very important. And finally, how do you do 10th, which is point is how do you plan your exit? Is it planned exit? And are you also looking at and being an opportunist? And both have to be very clearly defined. What is your opportunist idea? Which, which means that you define yourself as this trigger happens. My valuation hits this. And if I get up this level, I would call for an exit. Uh, so you need to predefine what is what is the uh, level you are looking at, where, where level you will call the opportunist call. And what is your planned exit? What is the time frame you've given for an investment? And you would like to do that. So this is my summary of uh, what I gave on the first uh, uh, presentation. So I quickly make the 10 golden points of investments. Uh, Sonali would be more than happy to share these points with you over notes or if you need to do that. So today's discussion is, is further going on the investment side. And we will now, every episode, go into different classes of investment and talk about this in, in detail. So today I will talk about largely two aspects. One is a mindset and culture. How do you really create a mindset and culture? And, and today, deep down, we will go and understand this uh, word, which we've been hearing for last 10, 15 years, particularly called angel investing. So what is angel investing? How people are invested in that? What should be the do's and don'ts of that angel investing? And, and who should be the right investor in this? Who should be the right asset, which you need to really look at to invest? And we'll talk about that. But before we start, the two very important things for being an angel uh, <clears throat> is uh, you need to really understand your mindset. You know, what is the mindset you need to come with when you are an angel investor? And second, what is the culture of that investment, right? So these are two very important aspects uh, to frame yourself and see that journey where you're going in. Because a lot of times uh, this startup and investing in startups has become a so to say a fad and a lot of people get into that without even understand deep down why they want to invest and are they really cut out to be an investor and are they cut out to be an angel to invest into promising startups or promising early stage companies and so on so forth <clears throat> and i'm not a big believer of uh, companies that are ideation stage uh, i'm not too big believer i feel that you might have to give a little more valuation that's fine but there has to be a commercial performance of a business already happened I personally have invested into businesses which were purely on ideation stage. And I know uh, they, if the commercial trial is not done, uh, sometimes you can get a strong financial losses. And, uh, and I have faced that in a couple of people. I really felt that they, were, they had a very promising idea, but they were not able to commercialize, so to say, that idea. 
So you have to really and now I have, as a principal, I personally have made that I don't want to go into any company which is which has no commercial success, which means they have not commercialized. They, they, nobody's. I mean, if they're not started trading, I don't go to a business. That's my rule. Uh, well, I mean, some people who who have very strong, uh, you know, capability to see through. Especially, I see a lot of uh, uh, successful technology uh, entrepreneurs invest into disruptive technologies because because they come from a background of technology. They can see through that what is the disruption really coming through. I cannot understand that because I don't come from technology, so I don't want to attempt that at that ideation stage. Uh, I I would like to invest into that's that's my own personal call, but that's. Can change with a lot of people, but I see today angels are uh, family offices, uh, doctors and lawyers, and people who have relatively lesser experience in businesses. And I would say the same suggestion for them that they should not really jump on uh, investing into which is something which is not have a commercial performance already have. You know, unless and until you are absolutely from the same business and uh, same uh, kind of industry, and you can see through, uh, then only you can really go to a uh, you know what I call drawing room or boardroom ideas, and uh, or a or a maybe a an ideation stage where you want to invest. So first, let's understand the mindset. What is the mindset of an investor? How you should look at an investment. First uh, mindset is that you have to be a coach, not a captain. When I say this, I say this with very clarity that you're not driving the business. There, there is somebody as a captain out there is driving the business. The max you can do, and sometimes that also is not given an opportunity for all the angels when they invest into businesses. They are not able to even coach. But the max you can do is coach, but you cannot run the business. You cannot involve yourself as an operator and so on. So, so mindset is very clearly that you are sitting outside the 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 uh, playground and somebody is playing. You just coaching or asking or or reflecting. You know, and most of the time, most positive way. Uh, that's the mindset you need to really come from. Culture is. Is about your investment style. An investment style, I've really realized, is has to have three very strong things. We call RDD, which means it has to have rationality. It's very strong rationality. Why this investment? And uh, you know, like uh, Warren Buffett always says that I never invest into businesses which I don't understand. So, which means that in the last 20 years, 25 years of the whole technology boom, he was not. He missed this boom because he never invested. Into that because he is his, his understanding of those businesses were not. So what is your nationality of of your making that investment decision, right? Second is that you have to have a certain discipline of investment. Unless and until you come in a very strong discipline of investment, that also doesn't work. And third, never invest all eggs into one basket. Diversify your portfolio. Unless and until you diversify your portfolio, it would not work. So, just for repeating yourself, in a mindset, keep yourself that you are a coach, not a captain. On a culture side, we rationalize on your rational, uh, uh, rationalize your investment. Put a strong discipline, discipline on terms of follow through, post investment cycle, uh, reviews, and so on and so forth, and also diversify your investment portfolio. I know investments are also done in the in some forms. I mean, you can also get into a convertible uh, debt structures, which which can be converted into equity at a certain level, and you can also straight away own the equity in the. In the business, so these are two kind of uh, uh, investment uh, positions. Now, another thing which is, is a lot of people ask, uh, it says, uh, you know, uh, how risky and how performing uh, uh, angel investment can be, and and so and so. What should be the expectation? I mean, we have we hear stories of people making hundred x, thousand x of their investments when they're invested early, and uh, not every company is going to become a Google, right? Not every company is going to become even Flipkart. Not every company is Ola, and not every company is Uber. Uh, so this is this is uh, some. They are very very exceptional companies, and and people who invested and got an opportunity to invest in the company, I would say they were they made the right decision at the right time. But also I would say they were they were fortunate. There was a huge value of uh, these companies, while they were similar companies or even better companies. Sometimes don't get through the whole life cycle, and there are many reasons for it. It's it's a uh, its reach, founders' performance, a lot of other things really multiply. But when you're coming as an angel investor, don't start thinking that you, every opportunity is becoming Google for you. That's not going to happen. I'll give you some statistics. Only 0.2% of uh, assets which you, which are early angel investors, uh, actually go to an IPO. So which means that it's a, it's a very, very small percentage of businesses which attract angel investments uh, actually go for an IPO. So. 
0.2% from a fundamental percentage viewpoint would look very small from from a realistic wealth creation viewpoint this number would still be very very big and what it can do for the angel investment uh, overall ecosystem 1.5% of companies actually get acquired right which means that they 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 are able to get a, a bigger investor coming in it uh, is more of the time sophisticated investor and private equity or or a, a large fund would come in inquire that that's where uh, you can uh, unlock your well but saying this this is this is what i call a good situation to be in you know 1.5% uh, situation is a good situation but other companies other investors also don't lose so to say money uh, almost about uh, 10% of assets when you invest into the businesses logically give you a certain amount of performance if i have to do averaging out of the investments largely uh, people look at uh, if you diversified portfolio some of the assets would perform better some would perform middle and some would not perform also that's why i encourage doing diversification but anything from a 20% to 30% irr kind of a return structure if you keep in mind and if you are if you are fortunate the investments can go much much higher and and one one good investment can cover all your pieces but that's something which you cannot predict today when you investing if you go with the mindset of a say 20 to 30% irr kind of a structure mindset or maybe up to uh, that level then you will you will see that you you're better placed and sometimes people over expect from their investments don't over expect from that plan yourself well but you you can really find that there will be there must be somebody who's a really uh, you know this uh, underdog and just goes up and and creates and changes the portfolio and the overall portfolio performs much much bigger valuation but that's something which you should keep it not as a firm mind don't put in your expectation cycle and don't even go there second point which i always advise that don't invest alone uh, if you invest alone it can be very very difficult uh, both from a understanding of asset view point and second also from a post investment analytics uh, always invest in a group uh, business x which is our platform also is a group which which encourages collective investment we bring couple of investors together showcase them them the opportunity and they can collectively go and invest so whenever you invest with the structure or a or a or maybe a angel angel group or, or some kind of a structure which is available and now with a lot of technology platforms like business x is there a couple of other platforms are also there your deal flows are larger and you are also able to get a higher quality of deals because anybody who raises up would present to a company like a business x or any other company that look i have this uh, opportunity available so your deal flow becomes bigger and good quality assets first reach out to these platforms and then they start going to individual investors and so on so forth so always be in the in the group now going to a very specific point and, and this is my again my own personal uh, uh, view point on that a lot of people ask me what is your investment style and what what do you really want to really look at in the investment so i make it very simple i i whenever you look at a company which is commercially proven but it's still a very early stage company early stage which means that they are they five six seven months in their commercial proven and they have started seeing some trading some kind of traction at that stage if i have to look at a company what should i look at before i want to really invest first thing i would always look at and i give 50% marks to this is the founder what is a founder what is his pedigree what commitment he has for next 5 to 10 years in the business and what is his last track record if i see these three things in a founder i see his pedigree which means his education his file his professional experience or whatever it is his commitment level that he will you not be into multiple things he is committed to uh, this uh, piece and also is track record if i am able to see these three things then i will give 50% marks on on my investment cycle on the founder itself or the founding team you know it can be mul multiple people who are there in the structure second is a, a proprietary product or a service i am fan of this i i'll probably give 25% on this but i'm really fan of uh, anybody who really comes with a strong proprietary product or a service and it cannot be necessarily to be disrupting technology or disruption in any form of and i think it can be a very simple business model but there has to be a certain proprietary product i mean look at a company like a subway very basic sandwich and nothing there but add a category like this they are a market leader there is no second no third no fourth no fifth they create whatever they create is absolutely proprietary to them now that's the function of how businesses become very large and global because they are able to find something which is very extremely proprietary and and uh, third i would like to give 
a business growth potential how the business growth potential in given market dynamics you know market dynamics keep changing keep changing but even a market dynamics of different different situations can arise and i can do some permutation on uh, that market dynamics i can still see the business which we are investing is commercially on now it's commercially trading from this position in 36 months can we see a 10x growth 10x growth from uh, uh, you know revenue view point is this is this expected is this can happen if these three things to me fit in 25% of business 25% on anything which is proprietary or and i think and 50% marks on the overall so if i rate a founder and i found that founder was good maybe it was not the greatest which i was looking at maybe i give the uh, 30% marks on that out of 50 and then i go on the second proprietary product or service gives some marks and this and anything which fits into me which is less than 60% or 65% uh, less than that and then i i don't see is a is a investment uh, space for me that's my own structure a lot of people have their own way of looking at it uh, uh, in their investment structure but my my looking at is always very simple three things uh, look at the founder look at a product proprietary product or a service and look at a uh, uh you know business growth uh, predictability in the structure now a uh, lot of people who invest always ask question in terms of what are the couple of risk you need to do apart from the business performance business performance we'll take it later uh, how the business performance and your equity growth that's probably the bigger risk which you carry but there are two other risk which you have and uh, relatively these are two risk uh, one is equity dilution right so you you invested at a certain value and that then they go out and raise another capital and sometime at a reduced value and uh, and you not save guarded your position in that so i invest at a as a valuation of 5 crores in a business and uh, and the founder runs out of money and then he goes back and raise from his another friend some money and and he is now reduced the value or uh, taken an entire thing so my equity gets diluted uh, my equity uh, has a risk on that so how do i really protect that uh, even if i want to protect uh you know my further dilution a couple of things you can do there are a lot of ways to really hang on second uh you really want to tag along you need to really go along with the next investment cycle also so there are multiple areas which where you need to really bring protection to your equity investment in terms of your the valuation being intact uh, you are not further diluting the value of the what you have invested and second your holding in the stake is also been in so you have to really see through how you create a uh, right kind of a legal structure the second big uh, uh, risk you are having is your what i call personal liability now this is becoming very tricky these days because uh, if you are invested in a personal capacity sometimes you also can get uh, involved if the business is not formed and there are potential liabilities being built on the business uh, you can uh, you can also suffer and these are all things which are comes from my own experience sometimes you invest in and, and the founder or somebody who's not done well so you can also be part of uh, investment and so forth. so so my learning says uh, always invest through a, uh, a you know a limited enterprise uh, so that your your investment is limited to the capital you have deployed the worst you can do is to lose uh, that that particular capital which you have deployed but doesn't come beyond that so you need to be very clearly that your personal liabilities are not really linked on uh, on this <coughs> now uh, let's understand investment now let's as a angel understand what are we going to do if we are as a angel investor going into the business what are the two areas which we need to do so uh, the, the investment is a combination of what i call science and art uh, science is what i call financial fundamentals never ignore that never ignore don't obviously look at the future look at 3 years 5 years 7 years but also look at today what is the real financial fundamentals telling you what are the financial fundamentals telling you if a founder is saying that look this is going to be very very profitable 3 years from now but today what is the balance sheet telling you is it it is making some sense and is there a compelling reason for whatever we changes needs to be done to have that changes 3 to 5 years what is the financial fundamental that's a very scientific uh, way of looking at it art is very qualitative factors of the of the business qualitative factors are you know sometimes the the opportunity you know the opportunity itself uh, sometimes can be very compelling right uh, and things of that nature like this days the digital life because of people not moving and so on so forth there are a lot of uh, qualitative fundamental factors which are coming out 
uh, which has to be done. So unless and until you create a combination of science, which is a financial fundamentals and and quality factors or qualitative factors, if you don't combine these two, you never would be having a right combination of an investment structure. Whenever you look at investment, always do diversify, uh, you know, and and create your portfolio. And portfolio should be further divided into three parts. One, how do you design your portfolio? Very importantly, how do you place your structures, uh, different baskets of investment, and how do you optimize your portfolio? So that's one first part. How do you design and optimize your portfolio? Second, how diversified your portfolio is. which mean that you invested into some future technologies and future businesses and you also invested into what i call very stable uh, business model and so on like very clearly when you do in stock market you you diversify your and also look at what i call market efficiencies what kind of market efficiencies are telling you and investments uh, investors can also be uh, further divided into two parts one i call the strategic strategic ones are people who just not only bring the capital but they bring a little more on that you know so uh, if you are somebody like a uh, you know if say sanjeev kapoor wants to invest a chef sanjeev kapoor then obviously he can bring in a lot of strategic value to any asset he can bring in his obviously um, you know brand he can obviously bring in uh, you know his, uh, his pr is he has a very strong pr and also he has a lot of network he can open up a lot of doors for you uh, uh, through his business so he, he so he invested into a say a cookware company called wonder chef and i feel a very very strong strategic investment view point while he would have invested capital but more than capital i think uh, he would have invested with with a lot of his brand and his capability and so so see where you are are you are you have a strategic view point on that and and making some sense second if you are a financial investor then don't over expect yourself you just bringing in capital and and as i said talk about 20 to 25 30% 30 irr kind of a, a return cycle So that's our investment uh, structure. Now, <clears throat> three things which which you should really look at uh, in a in a company which you want to invest, uh, asset which you are selecting to invest. Uh, first, what is the founding team telling you? Uh, is what is the mindset of this founding team? You know, very important to understand what is their mind. Is they, are they coming from a very closed mindset with closed objectives, very short term? mindset or or they are very infinite you know so we have we are very proud of this uh, company called uh, while they are have challenges now because of the businesses in hospitality going here and there but that's a separate debate but oyo is a great example you know so ritesh agarwal comes with a very clearly infinite mindset so he's is not is not locked with business models he's not locked by geographical territories he was the Indi only indian startup who went to 80 countries so people like that i i love because they, they fundamentally come with a very infinite mindset unless and until a founding team you are able to see through that they are, they are not restricted on boundaries they are not people who are restricted on that you will not be able to really see a bigger growth and bigger value creation and that's something which is very important so founding team understand maybe three four five hours maybe two three days spend a time with the founding team understand what are they telling you what are they telling you where how far they are able to see through so if they are not able to see further three things one continuous uh, breaking orbit and creating growth which means that every time they would get into an orbit they would know how to break that orbit and find another growth cycle uh, because every time you will hit something and then you need to break that and go to another cycle unless and you have capability and very structured design and orbits go to next growth it will not work second their mindset is very clearly wealth creation for stakeholders uh, rather than just drawing dividends if they have personal goals and they tell you sometimes they are very honest and that they have some personal objectives their personal objectives and so on so so they are short lived uh, they will not see through the overall value creation wealth creation for all the stakeholders and perpetual growth is the third point how do you create a perpetual growth cycle in the business how do it creates a self multiplier effect and uh, and the business moves when when uh, you know you're not even working you know so a business is moving and making money for itself so how do you get into that perpetual uh, growth cycle it creates its own uh, multiplier effect and that's where the real market shares are developed <clears throat> now let's go to a little bit on a personality uh, personality of these angel investors what what they come from uh, what do they hold and how, how they behave and i've seen professionals are becoming very good uh, investors now these days a uh, lot of professionals are investing because if you are a 
if you are somebody who is running a ctc of a 1 crore or 1.5 crore a year uh, you you don't mind putting 25 lakhs outside and invest into every uh, uh, you know uh, year as a separate on early investment companies and and lot of successful professionals have been a very very good investors rather the larger community of investors now are senior cxo level uh, professionals who carve out some money for them side and they they start doing it i'm not talking about the the top ones where they they obviously know where to invest but even uh, reasonably uh, senior people are also investing very clearly so <clears throat> i divide them into uh, two really uh, big points uh, one is a method of action which we call how you invest how you take your actions uh, and further divide them into two parts there are some very we take very carefully they are very careful and conscious about their investment and second are very impulsive on investment so how do your method of and i think that's that one division clearly comes in they're two extremist very very careful uh, very conservative uh, and very conscious about the investment and second is very impulsive uh, they go out and take decisions faster on on the call second is uh, overall level of confidence when you invest where are you uh, you might make a decision on investment but you were extremely confident of that investment and you were second is you were more anxious uh, while you invested but you were still anxious about that investment you still not too very sure that how this money would go in you you just uh, uh, you know uh, more anxious on on investment and then the further out of these four characteristics on terms of being careful impulsive confident and anxious we would find four different kinds of investor groups one are individualistic individualistics are people who have who are very careful but they are also very confident they do their own study they believe on themselves they they have a very strong their own opinions and they go deep down into every single study because they are careful so they will go deep down into studying uh, that business model understand the business model and 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 spend a lot of their own time to understand that so they become they are well researched and as they are well researched they are very confident on that investment so they are very individualistic second are more adventurous they are more volatile as entrepreneurs uh, and but they are also very confident because you will not be able to make that investment because you are not confident because confidence bring them and i think they believe in this they believe in the founder they say let's go out and do it but they are very volatile they just go and invest very fast so they are very impulsive and confident so they take that other grade then you have little more what i call celebrity uh, uh, investors which are more driven from what is new what is the fad what is the next big thing if everybody is thinking about renewable energy i would like to be there people are talking about plant protein i want to be there so a lot of people who who just observe world cha changes and they follow trends they are very trend followers uh, to me they are more impulsive also and they are very anxious also because they they are they don't know the subject well so they have not done because they just follow the trend because everybody is going there let me also go there so you never be very clearly confident on that investment because you not well research yourself and then there are the fourth category which are more what i call guardians uh, they are very careful and they are conscious also so this is this is the fourth grade so technically uh, the first one which is the the individualistic to me is the most best form of investor the rest three have a little bit of a some problem you know adventurous would be impulsive because he's not really done research but he believes in that business he wants to convert so all three other three are uh, well so you need to really see where you are and how you really change these four four dynamics how do you really balance between that but my best combination is being very careful and also confident that's my best combination uh and guardians are are not suited for angel investor they they might be investors for a mutual fund or places like that because they're very careful and very anxious also they would not be good for uh, active enterprise or early stage investment cycles to do it so really see through where you are you know and be honest about it if you investments are as i always say there are multiple assets which are available in the market which you can choose to invest i mean if you if you care anxious and guardian maybe property uh, long i mean a 7 year cycle at least in india it will give you some returns uh, it might not give you more returns it might give you uh, 10 11 12 percent returns but not give you a uh, very large returns like sometimes startups can give you so one has to really see the risk reward kind of a cycle and place yourself in what kind of uh, investor you are in angel invested is 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 like a marriage 
when you already expect a happy divorce over five years. So it's very unique. You know, you get into a marriage and you already decided that five years from now you will get into a, a happy divorce. And that's where the angel investment really starts or any form of investment really starts from. You know, you have a, a time frame where you want to really be uh, invested and what kind of a return you can get. Now, final part for, for today, uh, which is also very important uh, at these times for us to understand is that what happens when you are invested into business and there is a down market or there is an underperforming asset. And now, in these times, almost every startup which was uh, relatively early is very, very nervous. Very nervous because markets are tight, cash flow is broken, uh, business demand is broken, uh, everything is broken. So if I was an investor in Angel uh, into this and I have, say, four of these assets invested, what am I thinking? You know? uh, so there is uh, <clears throat> two questions come to your mind. And first question is, uh, how do I exit? And I feel that this question should not be at the absolutely at the times of downturn and, and uh, you know, when the un, there's not so much a predictability in structure. So because this is not time to exit. The second question is, how do you really survive this company? How do you, the company really survives so that your equity erosion is not happening? So you're not really losing entire whatever you invested as an equity. It's not going out. So second point to me becomes more important. You know, so one, you need to really do what I call post investment health checks, continue to go and visit your investment and see how you, it, your asset is performing, how healthy it is and how ready it is for any kind of adversity. Second, up now, if I have to come down on solution, the solution can be only two. One, you create a, the people who have invested together, they wrap up their investment and the, one of the lead investors also comes and starts taking a little bit control over financial governance. That's very important. That's that's very, very important aspect of this. Second, uh, second option is one is wrap up your investment and, and somebody out of the investor group takes the lead and becomes a little bit of now financial governance because you don't want now to lose the ship because you're now going extending your investment. You'll be risking yourself even more. You already invested. Now you just to save the board, you're going even for the investment. So it, it it's now needs more attention, more more supervision, so to say. And sometimes founders don't like it, but that's the answer. You don't want to erode. I've seen assets which were as good as last month and next month they were packed up because they just run on the edge. They had no cash flow. They were talking to a couple of big funds and their term sheet was signed and the term sheet dropped and something happened and they have no money to pay. So they, the company was not able to raise any kind of uh, money at that moment. And just businesses were packed up in three months. There was a company out of Bombay called Local Baniya. You know, and, and you, it's, it's very surprising to me. It's a good business, building structure, good marketing, good brand. Everything has been built. But in just about three months, the business collapsed. And uh, and it actually takes up the entire erosion of the entire investors who money is into the business. So, so those kind of uh, answers should not happen. So sometimes the investors should not shy away to ramp up and take control of their asset and and try to do that. Otherwise, you erode the entire asset. Second is, uh, is to really find out a strategic partner and just quickly shift the asset to another uh, uh, you know, group. And most of the time, this would be a strategic investor who would come and give you very realistic sometimes uh, uh, value and you can do an equity swap. And I, I always see having a small of something uh, bigger is not a bad idea. So like I mean, if, you, if you feel that you cannot run that, go to approach a strategic buyer who can take that business and you can take an equity swap, maybe at a very under, uh, realistic valuation or even a undercut valuation is not a bad idea because your equity would be saved and the future valuation of the new asset which you are parked in can still bring back your capital back. So these are only two realistically options. Third option can be there. There can be some unlock value sitting in that asset. How you can unlock that value also. So this is where today's session was. This today's session was about, uh, you know, clearly the mindset of an investor, deep diving into being an angel. How do you as an angel think through what kind of assets you choose, how you should invest, types of investors which are out there. And also talking about if this, uh, uh, you know, difficult times comes in, what should an investor think through? How do you safeguard your assets and investment? So this is uh, from my side. I will now like to invite Sonali if you have any questions which uh, you 
need me to answer otherwise uh, Uh, thank you so much, sir, for your wonderful insights and for the practical knowledge that I'm certain would help all the attendees present. Uh, yes, we would now uh, jump up to the Q and A round. We already have quite a few questions lined up with us. Uh, so the first question is from Mr. Anu Gopal. He says, "What is the current sentiments post-COVID pandemic in India on retailers in terms of investing or franchising new international brands?" Uh, sir, am I audible? What is the sentiment of a COVID pandemic in India on retailers in terms of investing on franchise, franchising new national brands? Right. Am I audible? Uh, sir, your voice is breaking up now. Uh, yes, sir. Please continue. Sure. So, so it is. Uh, I, I would say India would eventually, in a six to uh, a months to twelve months, uh, would become a very strong marketplace uh, uh, for international retailers to come to India, and so that's that's not my worry. Uh, but I feel that overall retail environments would find a big changes. Uh, they need to adapt digitally. A lot of delivery and a lot of other things would need to be done. So that's something which is extremely important uh, uh, for one has to really look at. So, but uh, I, I I don't see that's a problem. But made in India opportunity is also very strong. So we will have a lot of uh, opportunities, and Indian businesses would shine, and they would be able to see through. And I think the larger consumer behavior would also appreciate a lot of made in India business. Any other questions, Anali? Uh, yes, sir. We have uh, one more question that says, "What are the sectors that you are personally most interested in investing right now?" So I'm uh, I'm announcing one investment, maybe I think uh, as early as uh, two three days, uh, which would be in the uh, e-clinic space. So so I'm very very excited about uh, healthcare through technology. Uh, that's one space I I really feel India would have to lead uh, because I feel that uh, healthcare is a huge demand underserviced, uh, not so much of penetration of quality healthcare in the country. I'm very bullish on that. I'm very bullish on the entire you know uh, circular economy, uh, which means that uh, recycling, uh, energy, and things of that nature are very interesting. My brick and mortar. I'm my first love is for franchise assets, so I always invest into emerging franchise ideas. So that would always be my 80% of uh, investment portfolio because I feel that there I'm more strategic. I am strategic because I can I can really help those assets to ramp up. So I always look at uh, franchisable businesses. So I, I I I'm not going wide at this stage. I'm want to be really looking at uh, only few opportunities. I'm very clear in in the strategic side. I would like to be more actively involved, uh, and in advisory side, in things which are uh, not something which I understand so well. Uh, I would like to be uh, more as a, a very small minority investor in the business because uh, I don't want to really have my uh, you know. And I I I I've now made a rule that I don't want to invest more than a percentage in a company and uh, stay there and. Uh, and but I'm a long-term uh, investment mindset. I don't want to rush into investments and and uh, and I play with the founder because I feel that the founder has has a very important role to play and, and the founder is strong and then and I'm very comfortable on doing it. So so that's where uh, uh, my investment uh, is there currently. Wonderful, sir. So I think I'll just take up the last question for the day. So uh, the question is: Should I consider investing in a startup with a single founder? Is this reason enough to not invest in a good company? And also, is it right to only favor young founders from IIMs and IITs, or should we be more open to entrepreneurs from all areas of education and not judge them by the top 
you know b schools that they are studying from so so uh, you know i i take this as a as a very very important and delicate question to answer uh one when we say this uh, boys who come from iits and iims are are great uh, they also tell you a lot of things about themselves when they are iit and iims because obviously they were the brilliant slot they are very hard working uh, they are very disciplined uh, so they everything they follow is to to t so there are a lot of personality uh, functions really come out of these people which are from iit and iims and so on so forth so we should not really this is a, this is a good side of it right so uh, that gives you a lot of um, knowing somebody where it comes from right so when you hire somebody from a, a national institute of drama you know some form of acting he knows right so is somebody who is a topper in national school of drama like anupam kher or a people of that nature you already know that they they have some discipline right so there is some some background to it and most of the time they would they would stand by what they stand for uh, but that doesn't mean that i discount people who have who have phenomenal skills and something they believe in like uh, uh, you know and there are many entrepreneurs and actually originally entrepreneurs but dropouts and people who who came from uh, different backgrounds and they started some ideas and and uh, recently uh, ratan tata invested in one of my clients which i am extremely working on he's a, he's a 18 year old and uh, ratan tata invested into his generic medicine idea called generic athar uh, so he's 18 year old and uh, very disciplined i very very focused he is not from iit any i i am and uh, uh, mr tata thought that he is the guide guy to invest and we are also very proud at franchise india that he is our client and we working very aggressively with him so <clears throat> so sometimes you you really have to really take a call it's a it's a deep down but spend time with the founder spend time uh, spend a uh, couple of days uh, with him and see his journey and his 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 uh, is his life Uh, read through his life. Where, where is he coming from? What is he? What is he looking at? Don't impulse your decision to invest. Thank you so much once again, sir. I think we'll just wrap up the session here. Uh, and to all the attendees out there, thank you so much for your valuable time. And uh, we really hope to see you next time, next Saturday at three o'clock for another session with uh, Mr. Maria. And that session will be on how to scale up your business. So please make sure you join us then. And anything else you would like to say, sir? Yeah. So if you anything you want, uh, where Franchise India or Business X or Equity India can help, we are a platform of growth. We help companies to raise money. We also help sometimes you to sell your existing assets. All three things uh, we do as a company. So if you have any questions or anything which you want to discuss. or anything which you want to really reach out to me also i will give you my email id it's gm@goromaria.com and we also have a hotline number which uh, also sends all the information you send a whatsapp on what information you require uh, on anything i will give that also this is our business hotline and uh, i put in on the chat box uh so you can note down both so just send a whatsapp if you need any information and sonali would be more than happy to share you the minutes of this discussion which we had and even the past discussions if you want to see they are all available on the facebook you can go and review that uh and if you have feedback for me or anything which you want to share with me please reach me thank you very much thank you so much sir and yes to all the attendees please reach out to me in case you have any questions any concerns any doubts regarding the session or uh, regarding our upcoming or past sessions i would be more than happy to take up your questions and we'll see you next time thank you so much